Hey Pisces, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and today we're going to be doing a reading that's going to be a mix between one of the favorite readings here in the channel, which is the Stalker's reading, and a general reading as well. So I'm going to leave the Stalker uh, reading for the second half here of the video. We're going to start warming up with um, general messages. I hope you're all doing good. I hope everything is going very well for you. It's very early, you know that this is my sleepy voice. <laughs> I love doing readings when I feel kind of sleepy. I feel like my thinking mind is not yet fully engaged, so intuition tends to flow a little bit easier. So that's exciting, <laughs> Pisces. Get comfy, maybe get something to drink. I have my coffee right here. And we got new rules here for the channel. If any tiny little bit of this reading resonates, like the video. If more than three things resonate with you, three phrases, confirmations, predictions, advice, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And if more than three things happen to resonate, let me know in the comment section. Seems fair. That way I can sort of, I don't know, overview a little bit of the accuracy and see, you know, how you guys are feeling. So yes, Pisces, let's get started here. Remember to take what resonates with you. Leave the rest behind. Not every single message is going to be for you. Some messages are going to be for other Pisces watching. Spirit, angels. Archangels, beings of love and light, please bring in the most relevant and important messages for Pisces. What is it that Pisces needs to hear right now? What is it that Pisces needs to know? What are the most important predictions, most powerful confirmations, and the best advice for Pisces? So we're coming into an astrological interesting phase, we could put it that way. I am not an astrologer, but you know, it affects me, so I'm always kind of paying attention to it. It affects us all. So let's see. How can we best navigate this? Let's see. All right, so first we're gonna start with some jumping cards upright. All right. In the ring that I recorded yesterday, we have two 10 of cups and we have the 10 of cups again here, Pisces. So this is really, really good. This is emotional fulfillment. This is a confirmation that you're gonna be happy that you get to be happy right now, that looking back at the past, reframing it, healing, can bring you happiness too. So it's like happiness is available to you if you want it in the past, present, and future. Now, I see here that some of you are going to be expanding your family. Some of you are going to be aligning with um, maybe new property, new land. It doesn't have to be new, but it may be new for you. I see that you're making things happen, Pisces, with the magician. You're taking matters into your own hands. Some of you are not using your magic or your manifestation abilities um, much. You are relying solely on the physical, the tangible. And I feel like you got really far. You got a really long way. And now that you're going to be implementing also the ethereal, spiritual, energy-based dynamics to manifest what you want, it's going to go even faster, even better, even more smooth. Pisces, if you have been wondering if you're on the right path, you are. And I know that's a very general message to say in one of these readings, but from the thousands of, you know, people who watch tarot every day, not everyone is drawn to this reading, but you're here. You know what I mean? So this message is for you. 
you are on the right track. You are in your right path. Sometimes things look up, sometimes they look down, sometimes they're hard, sometimes they're easy. But that's the case for everybody. And with the Wheel of Fortune here, the Magician, and the Ten of Cups, I mean, come on, Pisces. These are really, really good cards. You're creating your own happiness. You're realizing that happiness attracts more happiness. You are happy in the moment, you find healing in the moment, you find a way to, you know, see life, you know, through the lens that gives you joy. And then more and more goodness starts to flow and it becomes a cycle. Some of you are going to be very, I feel like you are already Pisces. Um, some of you are feeling very passionate. You're truly taking a lot of putting a lot of attention into balancing things, making sure that every area of your life has your attention, your love, your discipline, your investment of energy. I see you here being very unique. I see you fully embracing who you are and what you like, even against, you know, other people's opinions or other people's potential points of view. You're like, this is me. This is what I like. I see many of you focusing on art as well. Also like like flowers, plants, growing a garden, tending to plants, tending to foods, maybe becoming vegetarian. Um, I see many of you spending your time in creative work. That brings you joy and fulfillment. I feel like many of you have in the past being sort of like at the mercy of healing. You know those healing processes that are so strong, like tower moments, in which it's like, like the energy almost traps you. And I know that sounds awful, but you know, healing can be rough. And sometimes the universe aligns in ways that are ideal for you to heal. But they're very uncomfortable. And I feel like many of you are coming out of that, out of that cycle and into a space in which you have more control over your healing, that you call the shots, basically, that you set the time, the space and the proper conditions for your healing to happen, not the other way around. Many options. Some of you are thinking about traveling, perhaps. And I see that you're going to have a lot of options. Um, and what I'm getting here, the message for those of you that resonate with this is it doesn't have to be one or two places. You can go on this like full blown tour. So let's say that you want to go to Europe. It doesn't have to be uh, just France or Spain. It can be all the countries you can fit into <laughs> the time that you have. Um, same goes for like if you're going to the United States, you can do like a road trip or something. They're telling you here, as far as destinations go, like, don't hold back. Because you could be kind of, like, enjoying a lot the, the movement from one option to the other. It doesn't have to be one, okay? That's a very specific message. It's not for all of you. But those of you who are planning travel, designing, <laughs> organizing a trip, yeah, that, that message is for you. All right, Pisces. So I see a level of empowerment. Uh, not going to lie. Swelling of your ego. So be careful with that. Um, but I do. It's like after a time of trouble, after a time of difficulty, for some of you, you know, you've had moments of grief, serious grief, grief that you may have thought like, this is, not, I'm never going to be the same. Like, this broke me. But now you're coming to be yourself again, Pisces. Some of you are starting to realize that after all this difficulty, <laughs> you can still be a rock star here. Look at this illustration. I mean, come on. This emperor is feeling himself. He's like, fuck yes, I am the emperor. <laughs> um, Aries energy. So we are in Aries season. And 
You know, it's it's after difficulty. After having moments in which you didn't get to speak your truth. Having moments in which you had to walk away knowing that you were misunderstood. Moments in which you had to walk away and be like, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to continue moving forward. These people are never going to understand. Whatever. A lot of you had to swallow some um, bitter pills and move on from that with that bitter taste. And it may not have been easy, but now I see that it's all worth it. You're going to start to understand also why it was worth it. Many of you truly had this mentality of, I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to go into drama. I'm not going to go into revenge. I'm not going to go into lower frequencies. I'm just going to move forward. And this quote, um, if you stop and listen to every dog that barks, you're never going to get to your destination. is coming to my mind. If you have heard it or if you like it, um, you can like this video as well. That would be if you stop and listen to every dog that barks, you're never going to get to your destination. I feel like many of you had this mentality for a while. And it's really paying off. <laughs> it's really, really paying off, Pisces. Some of you are experiencing new love. And this new love is going to make you feel very empowered. I see some of you connecting to someone who loves you properly. I can't express this enough. Someone who loves you right. Someone who sees you, accepts you, understands you, or do their best to. <laughs> Someone that you feel the same way towards. This card, the Two of Cups, this is good, good love. And for those of you who are seeking romantic love, this is a very good card to have. This is you finding your person. This is you finding that partner in crime, that soul that... You know, you can enjoy your life with. And can also support you through everything that you go through. Someone who you will want to support in everything they go through. This is just good. So if you're looking for love, Pisces, you know, some of you are really, really opening up to that possibility and attracting something really good for you. Some of you thought that you were never going to find happiness. Especially those of you who went through something very, very difficult. You may have thought like, well, that was it. Those were the good days, you know. That's, uh, I already peaked and I'm coming down. <laughs> um, take it if it resonates. For some of you, it's not the case. But I see here that many of you are realizing, well, you know, actually, maybe I get a second chance or maybe I get... Another opportunity to be happy, to find happiness within, you know, life in a way that I thought was unavailable or was going to be unavailable from this point on. I see life balancing things out for you. You have, honestly, Pisces, you have done good. You have mind your own business. You have worked hard. You have continued to have integrity. Your moral compass very clear. Even if that meant that, you know, other people may have cut in line in front of you. It seems here, Pisces, that you've made the right choices. Even if at times that wasn't necessarily convenient. Even if at times it wasn't necessarily to your benefit. And Spirit sees that. You're getting rewarded for that. And I feel like you didn't even do it... To get any kind of reward. It's just who you are. You're a good person, Pisces, with a good heart. It is what it is. And that makes it even more powerful. You know what I mean? Everyone can be nice. Everyone can be respectful. Everyone can be that bigger person if it's going to get them something. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what we see mostly in society. Um, you know, transactional relationships. But I see here that you're honest and you're good just because that's who you are and that's it, you know. Even if it is not necessarily convenient or celebrated in this day and age. 
and that makes it more powerful. The frequency of that is more pure. There's no hidden agenda with you, you know? I see that many of you are setting boundaries towards yourselves. Maybe in the past, you had moments in which you cried over spilled milk, which is fine. We need to grieve things that happen. But sometimes we do indulge, I think. Sometimes we allow the grief to become who we are because we're not ready to engage back in life fully. We need a minute, you know? And I feel like many of you are going to be setting these boundaries and saying, well, the reasons for my troubles or my emotional difficulty is officially not related to this grief. Something else must be going on. Some of you are really going deep into this and not letting a past loss, trauma, betrayal stop you anymore. It's like if something is holding you back, you're going to be addressing that with yourself, but you're over that grief period. Now, this doesn't apply for everybody. And this is not something that you should aim for. I don't feel like grief is something that you should hurry or have expectations of. But there comes a time. For me, it has been like six years after my sister's passing. And I know that's like a lot but it was awful, you know, seeing her sick and deteriorating, it was, just, it was awful. So, six years down the line, every day I'm better. And I feel like that is not who I am anymore. And I feel like grief is, to a certain extent, in the past. That doesn't mean that I'm not missing her. That doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. That doesn't mean, you know, but at the same time, it's not something that calls the shots as much. You know, take it if it resonates. This may not be for all of you, but if you know what I mean, like this video, comment, let me know. Have you lost someone um, very dear to you, very close to you? Do you feel like you are ready to move forward into a new phase, or do you feel like you still need more time to grieve? Just let me know. Of course, if you feel less sharing, that's very personal. So yeah, some of you are going to be almost like being disciplined with yourself, being like, okay, is this grief process actually over? And if it is, then we have stuff to do. Like no longer indulging. Not that it's pleasant, but I, I think you guys know what I mean. I don't know. I hope. <laughs> with the Six of Swords here, I see you moving into calmer waters. This is a card of coming into calmer waters, but I don't see necessary necessarily calmer waters, I see more clear water. From murky to transparent, you know, from brown water filled with sand to see-through water that, you know, there may be waves and ups and downs and activity and currents, but it's still clear though, you know, it's a different vibe. And I see you coming into this. Um, some of you may be learning something new. Learning something new that you're passionate for. If you are in school, if you're studying, getting a degree of some sort or certification, um, doing any kind of online course, it seems like it's going to be bringing a lot of abundance your way. Especially if it has to do with your Piscean nature, if it has to do with um, intuition, spirituality, dreams healing, um, even art, create, creative endeavors and things like that, ancient wisdom, all of that is definitely favored here. But Pisces, I'm very happy to see here that, I don't know, it's like you have really defined yourself, created yourself against all odds. And you're beautiful. So that was the first part of the reading, Pisces. If any little bit of it resonated or sounded true to you, comment below or like the video. If a lot of things sounded true or resonated for you, then subscribe if you haven't already. And let's go into... 
Should we go into the stalker part of the ring? Yeah, let's. That's always fun, right? <laughs> By the way, for those of you who are interested in this deck I just used, it's called Paws Tarot. It's a cat deck, as you saw. <laughs> it's very lovely. The quality is great. I just got this one um, a few months ago. All right, so what deck should we use? <sighs> for the stalker's reading. My back is hurting. I think I spent too long um, sitting down recently. By the way, you guys, the product of the week is going to continue to be the personalized readings. I'm offering... Um, it was supposed to be a limited time thing. But honestly, I kind of like doing these readings. I appreciate connecting with you all. I believe they help. I think they're affordable, you know. For many of you so I'm gonna continue to do them for as long as, as that feels right one question readings 55 bucks with 55 cents and that, that is US dollars um, you can get and book your reading in the description box below you're gonna find the link the sooner you get it the less you're gonna have to wait I know that it takes a while. In this case, for these readings, um, I'm setting a limit of 14 business days as the longest time you know that's going to happen. Of course, it's not going to take that long. It shouldn't unless something happens, right? Life happens, and the point of that is to you know, kind of buffer that <laughs> or you know make it still fit into that timeline. But for example, today. I have four readings. I'm going to be doing those today, sending them today. So if you book yours today, you're probably going to get it tomorrow. You know what I mean? But if you book it, you know, I don't know, a week from now, and there's a list that has piled up, then it's probably going to take a week or two. So if you're interested in getting a reading and you find it annoying to have to wait, um, book it today and that way you're gonna get it tomorrow or you know the day after depending on how many people buy Anyway, let's see What's up with your stalkers Pisces? So this is The stalker readings for those of you don't know don't know these are very lighthearted readings This is not about actual stalkers or dangerous situations of any kind This is about who is thinking a lot about you is there someone around you who's crushing on you, who's hating on you? Um, who is pulling on your energy? You know what I mean? Let's find out. Let's focus on the three main energies that are thinking a lot about you and why. Energy number one, who is this person, universe, who is thinking and focusing on Pisces, consciously or unconsciously, and why? Alright, so this is someone from your past. Um, some of you are dealing with a past lover, an ex, who's really thinking a lot about you, and the potentials they could have had with you, okay? Someone who maybe you could have had a relationship with, but it never really happened. Someone you had a relationship with, but it you know fell apart for whatever reason. They're thinking of you. Maybe they're having a child. Maybe they're in a current relationship. Maybe you are, but they're thinking of you. They're like, what could have that looked like? You know, in some cases they have regrets. But I see a family expanding. I see someone here getting serious in a love relationship. Could be you, could be them. Could be even someone in their lives that they are seeing being very happy and they think of you. They think, I could have been that happy with Pisces. You know, why didn't I take that opportunity? Why didn't I um, try harder? I don't know. Why didn't I treat Pisces better? They have regrets here. 
This could very well be a water sign, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. I get a feeling that some of you gave this person a chance and they didn't live up to it or they didn't think it was the right time or something and it seems like they're big time regretting that. This person is trying to work really hard and keep themselves busy not to have to think about it. So they're a little bit in denial, but I feel like this truth is really like piercing through their consciousness at this time. Uh, this person, uh, the regret is heavy. I feel like this person is like, I'm so dumb. <laughs> like I had it all with Pisces or I could have had it all with Pisces and for no reason whatsoever, I just didn't. So this person is really focusing on career or work, responsibilities, tasks. They don't want to see what is, it's almost like inevitably shown to them. And it's, it hurts, you know, there's regret here. It's, it's a thought that pierces through them. So if you have been posting online, let's say, or if you have been, you know, as a public figure, showing up on TV or radio stations, God knows, and they're exposed to you. Every time that they see your stuff, it's like, ugh, you know, it hurts. It hurts. And this could have been someone that, you know, this may have been, you know, this may not have been recent. This may have happened ages ago. You know, childhood vibes, teenage vibes. And... This person, I feel like they're stuck. I feel like they don't know how to move forward. I feel like they don't have... I don't think they have anyone, honestly. For the most part, they're single. They have been single for a while. They have been in relationships. They haven't worked out quite, quite fully. And Pisces, I feel like this person sees you as someone authentic. Someone who has lived up to their truth. Someone who would understand them and see them clearly and allow them to be themselves. And I feel like as time goes by, they value that more and more. And yeah, it's like someone, I feel like this is someone who had a crush on you for years. They would maybe say hi to you every single day, but they never really made a move or they never really took it further or I don't know, for whatever reason, it just didn't come through could be a uh, Capricorn Virgo Taurus as well with this Knight of Pentacles. Now they want to move forward, but they don't know where to. They want to move forward into, they want to like settle down and they don't have anyone to do that with. They haven't seen anyone like you in a while. You know, they haven't dated anyone like you in a while. And there is big time regret. In some cases, if this is an ex, they are really like uh, being hard on themselves because they didn't try harder. It's like they didn't show up fully for you. And now that they don't have a chance to do that, they're like, why didn't I just, you know what I mean? Like showed my love, showed my interest, be more clear, communicate it. I don't know. This person, this person feels quite empty. It's making them depressed. Cloudy. They may write to you, but I feel like for the most part they won't because they don't feel like there's a point to it. This could be someone you haven't talked to in forever. You know, this could be someone you have nothing in common with anymore. Um, this could be someone that it's like them themselves, it's like, it's pointless. Like, why am I going to stir this person's life? What am I going to get my hopes up if I know for a fact that nothing is going to happen? Interesting, Pisces. So that's the first energy that's heavily focusing on you. Comment below, do you know who this is? You may have even dreamt of this person. Alright, so spirit, angels, beings of love and light, who is the second energy focusing a lot on Pisces and why?
All right, so immediately we have a an air sign. So this could be Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Ooh, strongly, because we have Queen of Swords and King of Swords. Damn, air sign. You know, this air sign could be Libra, uh, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Okay, doesn't have to be the case, but it could be. This is in what? What the hell? Holy shit! What? How? How? How does this make sense, Pisces? So obviously, many of you know that in the tarot we get one of each character, right? This is like bending reality, glitch in the matrix kind of thing. We have two King of Swords with different illustrations. What the hell? So this is not an error in which the deck just doubled the card. How does this happen? Pisces, what the hell? What in the actual fuck? Pardon my French. I'm sorry, I'm like a little shaky and everything. Like this is insane. I wanna, I, what the fuck? <laughs> Let me get a booklet here to dive deep into this, cause like, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> uh, wow, Pisces, okay. So first let's go into who is the King of Swords? Let's read the full thing. Let's get a complete understanding of this because this is crazy Pisces, what the fuck? Sorry. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I'm mind blown. I'm trying to play it cool here and failing desperately. <laughs> okay, so who is the King of Swords? Let's let's really, really see every single aspect of this. What would you sacrifice for knowledge? What would you be willing to give in exchange for wisdom? What oaths would you make? And what promises would you break for the knowing of truth? Hoo -hoo. And this is paired up in this reading with the Seven of Swords. Oh man, there is a truth here that someone is keeping from you and it's weighing on them. It's destroying them from the inside out. And I know that is a lot to say. There is a truth here that is exploding out of someone. Do not let the weak ones lie to you that knowledge is gained by sleepwalking through the world. Knowledge is hard fought for paid for in blood and bravery by those who dare to stand. I sacrifice my very self so that I might glimpse into the wisdom of the mysteries in the deep. What would you give? What would you continue to do? Knowledge is not one thing to be held or caressed, but a thing to increase and fill. It can leave you easily should you lose grasp of it. Where are your eyes in the world? Where is the source of your wisdom? So Pisces, this could have been someone that aligns with this uh, form of thinking, okay? This could be a Libra, Gemini, Aquarius who values knowledge, spiritual knowledge perhaps. This is someone who would prioritize wisdom, even in a cult-like manner, when unhealthy, of course. On my right hand is memory, and on my left is thought. There are my wings covering the surface of the earth with shadow. Where the shadow falls, there falls also my reach of knowledge. I bear within me the knowledge of all the ages. No man can win a battle against me. No god nor monster can succeed. Knowledge has its own lineage and bloodline. What is the line of your knowledge? Is your mind as quick and active as the wolf pack that runs and hunts its prey? Are you 
worthy of my great wild hunt, swift of sword and quick aiming of arrow. Will you shield shatter at the first strike of the battle? I am the great cloaked wanderer, and they have called me grim, flashing eye, gallows burden, wise one, advantage counsel, finder of truth, smith of battle. I incite you to battle for wisdom, not to lay down your arms until the end. Wow. Wow. Pisces, this is insane. For many of you, it could be like, okay, we get it, whatever. <laughs> but this is not, this is not a thing, Pisces. I have got like 500 tarot decks or something. It's insane. I'm a collector, like officially collector, not just hoarder. <laughs> and I don't remember this happening ever. I've seen cards doubled, you know, from all of these cards. Yeah, I mean, manufacturers can make mistakes and you can get two of the same. But having two with different illustrations just feel like a glitch in the matrix, to be honest. So I'm glad to share that glitch in the matrix with you right now. <laughs> so what I see here, Pisces, is... Someone who sees that your soul has retained all the wisdom from past lifetimes. This is someone who's jealous of that. This is someone who could have been a spiritual teacher. This could have been someone who had the intention of educating you only to realize you were educating them. To be humbled by you. Someone was humbled by you. And they see you and it's almost like so bittersweet because they want to learn from you. But for some reason they can't or shouldn't. This is someone who perhaps thinks of you as a soulmate, as a twin flame, as a karmic. I don't know. It's like there's a connection they see with you. But now they're walking alone. This is someone who is growing. They're evolving. They're changing. They're healing. They may have slept on you. They may have thought of you like, oh, you know, Pisces is kind of immature or Pisces doesn't know what they're talking about or they take things too lightly or they don't value spiritual process, whatever. And now something happened and they're like, holy fucking fuck. Like Pisces knew what they were doing all along. Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, so heavily... But it could be another sign. There's just so much air in their chart, though. In the Tarot Apocalypses, which is this book, by the way, which is not the one I'm using, but this is the, the booklet that I have the closest to me. The King of Swords is Odin, the Norse god of language and knowledge. He was a god of warfare. He is spoken about a great length in the Eddas and Sagas and given an elevated position among the gods. In the Eddas, or Edas, we are told that he had a hand in organizing the universe and giving humans life. The basic stuff of life already existed, but Odin, Hainir, and Loder shaped it and fixed it into place, giving order to chaos. The King of Swords is not creative, but he's an organizational force that creates the order necessary for things to work correctly. The breath that Odin gave the first humans is symbolic of language, intelligence, and the ability to give form to thoughts and put thoughts into action. Odin often goes to extreme lengths to gain more knowledge. We're told in the Gilfaginings 
of a well in the roots of Igras He is full of learning because he drinks of the well from the horn Mgialar horn. Okay, bye. <laughs> A judge, lawyer, lawmaker, and lawkeeper, protecting promises, oaths, and contracts, a strategist and tactician, a great thinker, an intellectual leader, an expert in the academic field, achievement of knowledge, passion, drive, feeding knowledge, active communication, reaching the culmination of research, a burning desire for knowledge, deduction, willingness to sacrifice for knowledge, ambitious ideas, excelling intellectually. For some reason, I can't stop thinking of a, an accountant. That's what's showing up in my mind very strongly, an accountant. So, I don't know, that <laughs> could be relevant for you. Negatively aspected, bad temper, clouded judgment, incorrect conclusions, oaths broken, contracts not honored, a blockage, the full weight of the law being used negatively, a tyrant. Hmm. So you may be dealing with someone with a lot of power, Pisces. But not as much power as you. They may have po power and authority in the physical realm, but they see right through and they see that you have almost like spiritual clout. <laughs> like you have um, spiritual authority here. It's kind of sad a little bit because I see that someone here is like, they felt they were all that. They felt up high in their high horse, looking down at you, thinking of themselves as, you know, the shit, basically. But then they saw your true self and they got very humbled. And now it's like almost sad. Like they seem to be holding the knowledge that they know very dearly, very kindly and being like, you're not much, but I love you. You know, like, I don't know, this person really just like shrunk in your presence. This is someone who feels lonely. This is someone who maybe has seen you with your partner or with a friend or with your family and they feel like they could have that. The number 42 could be relevant for some of you. Very interesting. This is someone who's maybe into fashion, maybe they weave things, maybe they use needle and thread in some shape or form. They could have um, Asian roots, descent. They could be into bird watching. This is super random, but like, yeah. All right, now moving on to the third energy here that is focusing a lot on you, Pisces. Oh wow, okay. <sighs> we got the lovers in the ten of cups and the chariot damn pisces love is in the air with a water sign a passionate water sign all right so some of you here if you are partnered with in romantic love with a cancer pisces scorpio aries leo sagittarius then this could very well be your current partner being absolutely head over heels for you <laughs> absolutely in love like completely just mesmerized by you if that is not the case then someone here is feeling that way about you could be that first person we talked about could be but doesn't have to be that necessarily someone here is like in love with you pisces 
they want to be with you forever. It's like this complete and absolute devotion, even if they have never met you, which is kind of crazy and not entirely healthy in my opinion. But it's almost like a soul recognition for some of you. This person right now hasn't expressed their feelings. They haven't opened up. But when they do, because they will, it's going to be loud. They're going to be like coming to your house with like a set of flowers and like, you know, a fucking like beatbox. <laughs> it's like this person is going to make it very clear for everyone that they're like head over heels for you. Even if you don't, you know, like them back, they don't care. They're going to be very loud, but they're not doing that right now. It seems like they're not ready for that right now. But they're headed in that direction. This is someone who's always been in love with you. And you may not be able to tell because they may have been painfully slow in approaching you, in communicating with you, in making a connection with you. It's like, you may even feel like this person actually doesn't like you because of how like nervous you make them or how... They just glitch in your presence. I don't know. This is someone who... Since they know that you exist... Could have been years ago. They have been completely and absolutely set on fire for you. This could be someone who travels a lot. This could be someone who's incredibly romantic. Doesn't have to be someone necessarily spiritual, but very romantic. I'm seeing a penguin <laughs> that could be relevant. I see, you know, the penguins uh, made for life, I think. This could be someone that is really weird and mysterious. And you may have honestly thought this person doesn't like you at all, but it's because you make them nervous. You make them freeze is what I heard. This person is thinking a lot about you, about the possibilities. This could be someone who isn't actually in another relationship, but it's like you have their heart. It's like you say the word and they're going to drop everything. I don't think you will. <laughs> I don't think that that's, that's necessarily what's going on here. Um, but, but this person just, I don't know, what they feel for you is loud, intoxicating. Could be a Gemini, could be a Cancer. But this person is happy. They're happy and content where they are. So if you know who this is and you're not willing to give them a proper chance or you don't feel the same way, you know, leave them alone, Pisces. Because this person would drop everything for you. In a way that it's kind of sad. Like, they would drop their family, their kids, their country to be with you. Forever. And if you don't feel the same way, like, don't even get their hopes up. Like, that's just fucked up. <laughs> okay, Pisces. So that's what's showing up in this part of the reading. This is the stalker's part of the reading. Do you know any of these people? Can you identify any of them? If you can, comment below. Like, I'm curious. I just heard by curious. Huh. I'm still blown away by the King of Swords situation here. It's like a glitch in the Matrix caught on camera. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the title of the reading. Oh my goodness, Pisces. Um, so let's wrap the reading up with an oracle, shall we? I remind you to check in the description box below if you would like to book a personalized reading. I would recommend you do it right away when you see this video because I have availability and if you do it right away, you don't have to wait a bunch of time, which I know is annoying. So the sooner the better. I got four readings pending for today. I'm hoping to complete them all. So if you book today, you may get your reading, you know, in a day or two. 
depending on how many people listen to this advice. Because if all of a sudden a lot of readings come in, then you know that might change. So the sooner the better, Pisces. Let's get an, an advice for love, an advice for health, and an advice for money. Let's start with love after all of this we just saw in the stalker's reading. What is the best advice? for the Pisces Collective, especially Pisces watching at this time, for love. Calling in your soulmate. Pisces, if you are interested in romantic love, if you're interested in having good friendships, if you're interested in a real connection, it's time to call in your soulmate. Even if you're in a connection that is not you know, entirely appropriate for you, you don't really feel all that invested, call in your soulmate. You may be surprised at how spirit moves things behind the scenes for someone to come into your life. The advice for money is do the work. It's not enough to dream or pray. You've also got to take the positive action steps that you're being divinely guided to take. Consistently working on your priorities will make them flourish like a lush flower garden. So that's the advice for money and career, Pisces. Do the work. Do the work. Do the things that are boring. Do the things that you resist. Do the things that need to get done. Make them fun somehow. So the advice, the best advice for Pisces about health right now is courage. Archangel Ariel, be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. So this has a lot to do with the throat chakra. If any of you have been having issues with the throat chakra or around this area, um, it could be something that you're not saying, something that you're not expressing or something that you're really wanting to scream out and let everyone know how you feel about. So yeah, that would be Pisces, the advice for each area showing up today. If you like this video, please like it. If any bit of it resonated, please like it. If a lot of it resonated, please comment or subscribe if you haven't already. And check out the personalized readings, 55 uh, US dollars with 55 cents for a one question personalized reading. The sooner you book, the sooner you get it. Sending all my love, Pisces, and I'll see you in the next reading. Bye.